I'm Dr. Dudley Harris. I'm talking to you because you have a cataract and you're going to have it fixed. You're going to have a cataract operation. And this video is going to review with you what we call the informed consent. It's going to tell you what's going to happen to you and what some of the risks are that are involved in cataract surgery. So you've come to the ophthalmologist's office because your vision isn't really sharp and clear. You know that the letters are supposed to be sharp, but chances are, instead of looking like this, they look more like this. And you found that that's just not acceptable and you cannot see good enough to do the things that you want to do. So now you want to get it fixed. You've come to see the ophthalmologist. The first thing that you're going to have is a refraction and that is with this gadget here. This is going to test to see if new glasses will solve your vision problems. You've had that test and the answer is new glasses are not going to fix your problem. After we do the refraction or test for glasses we want to look into your eyes and see what it is that's causing your trouble. To do that we use this gadget which is called a slit lamp biomicroscope and by looking through here we can see just what's going on inside your eyes. And in your case, this test has shown that you have a cataract. Just let me review very briefly what a cataract is. Here's the inside of the eye. And this is the front right here. Light comes in through here. It goes through this lens right here. And it's focused on the retina back here. If this lens becomes cloudy, that is called a cataract. And light cannot pass through a cloudy lens to make a clear image here. So a cataract operation is just the removal of that lens. Take that lens out and then we put a new lens in, which is made out of plastic, we put it right back there and that will restore the clarity to the lens and bring back clear vision. You're going to be given this sheet of paper right here and I'm going to review with you and explain what the words mean. It's the Cataract Disclosure and Consent Medical and Surgical Procedures. To the patient, you have the right as a patient to be informed about your condition and the recommended surgical, medical, or diagnostic procedure to be used so that you may make the decision whether or not to undergo the procedure after knowing the risks and hazards involved. This disclosure is not meant to scare or alarm you. It is simply an effort to make you better informed so that you may give or withhold your consent to the procedure. I voluntarily request, and there's a blank and your doctor will fill in the name there, his, name, his or her name there, as my physician and such associates, technical assistants and other health care providers as he or she may deem necessary to treat my condition, which has been explained to me as cataract in my, and then it'll write either the left or the right eye. I understand that the following surgical, medical, and or diagnostic procedures are planned for me, and I voluntarily consent and authorize these procedures. And that procedure is called cataract extraction, with intraocular lens implant and again it will ask which eye, so either the left or the right eye. I understand that my physicians may discover other or different conditions which require additional or different procedures than those planned. I authorize my physician and such associates, technical assistants and other health care providers to perform such other procedures which are advisable in their professional judgment. Now it's very rare to encounter a problem in cataract surgery that needs a completely uh, new or different treatment other than one that's already been discussed with you. Uh, perhaps uh, things like a small pterygium that might be removed, that's a growth on the surface of the eye. But otherwise uh, there aren't many 
things that we might encounter, but still, you do have to recognize or you do have to agree that if the doctor finds something that needs doing, then you're giving the doctor permission to use his or her good judgment to take care of whatever problem that, that, that is encountered. Or I do not consent to the use of blood and blood products as deemed necessary. Now it is almost unheard of for a person to need a blood transfusion for a cataract operation. I suppose that possibly, let's say, something, if you had some other medical problem and you had to be taken to the hospital, which resulted in some other problem for which you needed blood, that might possibly occur. It's very unusual. Uh, if you have no problem with it, I would just say, I do consent. If you say, eh, I don't want to get a transfusion no matter what, then just say, I do not. It doesn't make any difference in the, in the consent form, except that if you do happen to go to the hospital, you would not get a transfusion. A guarantee has been made to me as to result or cure. That just means that we cannot promise and we cannot guarantee that everything is going to be as we predicted. We can only state the probability or the likelihood that things are going to work out. So the likelihood for cataract surgery is very high, 95 or 97, 98, 99 percent, no complications, but 99 percent is not the same thing as 100 percent. So you need to understand that there is not a guarantee and not a promise that things are going to work out. Just as there may be risks, just as there may be risks and hazards in continuing my present condition, without treatment, there may also be risks and hazards related to the performance of the surgical, medical, and or diagnostic procedures planned for me. I realize that common to surgical, medical, and or diagnostic procedures is the potential for infection, blood clots in the veins, lungs, hemorrhage, allergic reactions, and even death. I also realize that the following risks and hazards may occur in connection with this particular procedure. Now there's seven listed complications and I'm going to review those. Number one, complications requiring additional treatment or surgery. That is sometimes seen in cataract surgery when we cannot remove all of the cataract and we have to go back a second time and take out the pieces that we could not get. This is not a common uh, event. It occurs maybe one in maybe a hundred or one in two hundred cases. Number two, the need for glasses or contact lenses. Even when we use a lens implant, we still need to fine-tune the vision after surgery with glasses. We generally don't wear contact lenses after cataract surgery, but glasses are almost always required for sharp vision for distance and probably especially for near. Complications re requiring the removal of the implanted lens. Sometimes the lens is not exactly in the right place, sometimes it moves, we have to take it out. This is very, very rare. One in a thousand cases is my estimate. Number four, partial or total loss of vision. This could result from a detachment of the retina or from infection. Uh, again, not common or uh, actually quite rare. The uh, risk of coming out of surgery worse than you were before surgery is very low. Uh, one in a thousand cases most likely, somewhere along in there. Number five, pain. There is some discomfort associated with cataract surgery. Most people only need Tylenol or an aspirin for that. Uh, but uh, if there were to be an infection, then certainly uh, there would be significant pain. In spite of that risk, you still have to sign the consent that you know that's a risk factor, but that you're willing to accept that risk in order to get better vision. Number six, worsening of the condition. By that we mean if your vision got worse after cataract surgery. Again, that's an extremely rare problem or complication, but uh, it is possible if you had an infection or a detachment that your vision could actually end up worse than it was before surgery. 
And number seven, possible infection or bleeding. Infection is the complication that we fear the most. Uh, fortunately, that's very rare. One in 7,000 cases is a statistic that is uh, probably pretty accurate. Uh, and so, while the risk is not great, infection is a bad thing. We work very hard to prevent infection. Sterile technique, we use antibiotics before surgery, antibiotics after. Uh, we uh, make every effort to make sure you don't get an infection. Uh, but still, the risk is not zero. So you have to understand and give your consent for the procedure, even though there's a risk of infection. And a risk of bleeding uh, is extremely low. Uh, bleeding can occur in cataract surgery, but uh, very, very low risk. But still, you have to accept that risk. I understand that anesthesia involves additional risks and hazards, but I request the use of anesthetics to be administered by or under the direction of the anesthesiologist, whose name will be written on this form for you, for the relief and protection from pain during the planned and additional procedures. I realize that the anesthesia may have to be changed, possibly without explanation to me. Now we have an anesthesiologist that's going to take care of you uh, before, during, and after your cataract operation. And you give your permission for that anesthesiologist to take care of you during surgery. So by signing this consent, you're giving permission for that. Understand that certain complications may result from the use of any anesthetic, including hemorrhage, respiratory problems, drug reaction, paralysis, brain damage, and even death. Other risks and hazards which may result from the use of general anesthetics may range from minor discomfort to injury to vocal cords, teeth, or eyes. I understand that other risks and hazards resulting from spinal or epidural anesthetics including headache and chronic pain. I have been given an opportunity to ask questions about my condition, alternative forms of anesthesia and treatment, risks of non-treatment, the procedures to be used, and the risks and hazards involved. And I believe that I have sufficient information to give this informed consent. Now the issue of the anesthesia consent, that sounds uh, pretty formidable and pretty scary, but the reason that they go over this is that uh, let's say you had uh, a heart attack and the anesthesiologist had to intubate you or put a tube down your throat. Well then some of these things might happen. So that's why you would need to give your consent for that. Uh, it's unlikely that that would be a problem associated with cataract surgery since cataract surgery is just a local uh, local anesthetic. Uh, rarely does it have any real problems with anesthesia. But still, since uh, the future is an uncertain proposition, you still have to give your consent for the anesthesia to be used. In addition, the Anesthesia consent form says that you've been given enough information so that you can make a decision about what to do. So if you think you haven't been given enough information, then please ask the doctor or you can ask the anesthesiologist at the time of surgery because before you get any sedation, the anesthesiologist is going to talk to you and see how you're getting along and do a, a little physical examination of you. So that will be your chance to ask a question. If you have any questions, at the, uh, you might want to ask them then. Of course, if you, you might want to ask them before that, since once you get to the operating room, uh, things are pretty much underway. And lastly, where you sign, it says, I certify this form has been fully explained to me, that I have read it, or I have had it read to me, that the blank spaces have been filled in, and that I understand its contents. And then it's going to give a date. It's going to give your date of birth to make sure that we have the right person, uh, your name and your signature. There will be a witness who signs it. And that is the informed consent.